Hello and welcome to the vlog. Two years ago I took my narrowboat to Yelvertoft Marina where it was hauled out of the water and I blacked the hull. That is to say painted a bitumen paint all around the hull which is basically a protective coating to stop the steel rusting. Normally I'd probably allow three years between such blackings but I'm quite keen to see actually how my handiwork has held up and I don't think it will do any harm to do it sooner so two years down the line I've now brought the boat to a dry dock in stone and the boat will shortly be going in there and will spend a week being re-blacked and I can have a jolly good look at the hull. As directed by the wharf that was going to do the work for me, I'd arrived in stone the night before, which was a Sunday at the end of October. I always rather enjoy seeing buildings under construction. This is a new pub, I believe. There's the wharf, the Canal Cruising Company. They told me to tie up alongside their hire fleet overnight and then I'd be ready straight away to go into the dry dock the next morning. That next morning dawned rather damp, but it wouldn't be long until the boat was under cover. The night had been rather clangy, as in the slightly awkward space, none of my fenders correctly fended off the neighbouring boats. Never mind, it was just one night. They've got a big hire fleet, and I saw a lot of these when I was going along the Macclesfield and up and down the Trenton Mersey. The company has three dry docks in all, but the one I was moored next to wasn't the one I'd be going into. It's dependent partly on their bookings and partly on your boat's draft, that is, how deep it sits in the water. Mine would be that one at the end, so we had to start with a bit of boat shuffling. Sure enough, their team turned up bang on time, and I gently moved the boat towards the dock, which at this point was, obviously, full of water ready to receive me. Just as I nosed in, there was a very good spot by one of the staff, namely that my chimney was about to get knocked off, so they rescued that before it disappeared. Then, standing either side of the boat, they pushed it gently in by hand. Now the dock needed to be sealed up so the water could be taken out. This firstly means scraping the bottom of the entrance to remove any muck that would prevent the stop planks from forming a good seal. That done, several long planks are dropped one after the other across the gap sinking down so that eventually they form a complete and almost watertight barricade. Wedges on the ends hold everything in place. The boat was floating free but about to descend when the water left so one chap stood on the front, and I was at the back, and we both held the boat steady in the centre of the dock by grabbing metal rails overhead. With the boat ready, a giant plug in the bottom of the dock was pulled open. Slowly, very slowly, the water flowed through gravity down into the next level of the canal, as the wharf is conveniently next to a lock. As the water vanished, the dry dock became, well, dry, or at least less watery, and the hull of the boat emerged from the depths. I don't know about you, but I often forget just how much boat there is below the waterline. Look at that great big slab of a thing. It was my first chance to see how the metal was looking, and all was good. Those orange spots are superficial, nothing to worry about. To ensure a watertight block, a small amount of dirt is tipped behind the planks, which the water pressure then pushes into any gaps, making a good seal. The boat by now is resting on wooden blocks fastened to the bottom of the dock. The anodes were in good nick. Even the old one I left on two years ago had a little life left, and the new one I'd added back then was barely changed. 
Yes, I know, the rope fender on the front of the other fender has now outlived its useful life. It will be removed when I get round to it. Those anodes were looking good as well. The last of the water was draining away with very satisfying gurgles and whirlpools. Here it goes. I told you it was a giant plug hole. Done. The dry dock was as empty as it would get, with just a little excess flow from the stop planks being routed along a shallow channel in the concrete. Some crud around the prop was easily pulled off. The first step in blacking the boat is jet washing all the muck off the hull so that new paint has something clean to stick to. I wasn't doing it myself this time round, and, like the water gurgling away, this was immensely satisfying to watch. Look at all that muck! Who's a clean boat? Who's a lovely clean boat then? The downside of all that is that it shows you just how easily the old blacking comes off, but then again it means you get a really good look at the hull and how pitted it is or isn't due to rusting or any bangs and crashes. For a 20 year old boat, mine is in really good condition as far as I can tell. None of those dimples on the surface are anything other than superficial. The metal here was 6mm thick when the boat was built and I don't think it's much less now. What you do note is the distinct difference between the blacking coming off at the waterline and it sticking well above it. It's always on the waterline you get the most problems like rust because that's where the water, air and the metal meet. At the bottom, the 10mm thick base plate chine is in excellent order. With the boat dry, something I've not had done before, having not known it would be useful, the shiny metal along the waterline is ground to give it a key, so that the new bitumen will stick better this time round. It might look scuffed, but this is actually good. It'll make for a better job. And you can tell they've done this a few times before. Where I painstakingly used a tiny roller and it took ages, this is how the professionals do it, with a big globby brush which can slap the paint on quickly and thickly. This too was very satisfying to watch. And look how much nicer and newer the boat looks after just one coat. This was then left to dry overnight before a second coat would be applied the next day. I did live aboard at this time. The underneath isn't blacked except at the back. I explained why in my last blacking video. Even the weed hatch got a coating inside. Whilst I wasn't doing the work, I did something even more important. Play with the yard dog who spotted me as a sucker straight away and trotted up every day for playtime. She was a delight. With two coats of bitumen on and dry, the dock could be filled with water again. The hire boats were moved out of the way so I could reverse out and the giant plug was dropped back into place to keep the water in this time. The plugs were removed from the sides of the stop planks. This 
and the top plank removed. Nothing happened. But then the second plank was lifted. That was more like it. Just the one was taken out. We didn't want every boat in the pound suddenly moving along. Watching this was, you guessed it, immensely satisfying. Bye bye rudder, see you in another two or three years. Eventually the flow subsided a little and the boat suddenly came free and floating again. The last planks were pulled up, otherwise the boat would crash into them as I went out. I do want to say thanks to the Canal Cruising Company folks. They were great, and no, this is not an advert. I paid for this work in full like anyone else. The boat came out, and I could head off to my winter mooring. Cheerio.